In this screencast, we'll demonstrate how to add index tags to your content files and generate a full back-of-the-book index using Atlas. We'll show you how to insert terms, add see also references, sort terms, and use ranges, as well as some general best practices and caveats. One important thing to explain up front is that Atlas uses dynamic indexes, where index tags are embedded directly in content files during production, and the index is generated automatically during the build process. This dynamic, embedded method of indexing is different from the more traditional static indexing, where an index is written manually using hard-coded page numbers at the end of the production cycle. If you're used to working with static indexes, indexing in Atlas will be a different approach, but ultimately it has several benefits. One is that whenever book content is updated, page numbers in the index do not have to be updated manually. They are updated automatically by the system. This means less manual labor in the long run and more accuracy. Another advantage of dynamic indexing is that index entries become hyperlinks in your web and ebook formats. If you click an entry, you jump to the reference content in the book. This makes for a more convenient experience for the reader. Let's get to some demos. Here's a sample project with a few chapters and files. Let's say we want to start indexing chapter 1. To insert an index entry, place your cursor somewhere near the relevant content. Make sure not to actually select any text. Click the ribbon button in the toolbar. This will open a window with fields for entering various kinds of information. Let's just do a basic primary term for now, since this is the one required field. When you click OK, the window closes and a ribbon is inserted. If you click it again, you can view, edit, or remove the entry. Don't worry, the ribbon icon is only shown in the Atlas editor. It will not appear in the output. That's about as simple as it gets. Make sure to save. You can see the actual markup that is created behind the scenes by clicking into the code editor. Editing terms is as simple as clicking on the term again and changing the text. For example, if you need to fix a typo. You can also remove a term completely. You can see the ribbon icon has been deleted from that place in the text. Atlas also supports secondary terms. A tertiary term can be added in the same way. We'll show the other fields in a moment, but let's pause here to try building the index and see how it looks. First, make sure to save. To generate an index for the first time, there are two important configuration steps to do. First, Atlas requires a boilerplate index file. Go to the dashboard and make sure you see a file called ix.html. If you don't see one, you can read the Atlas documentation for info on how to create one, or ask the production editor for assistance. The second step is to click the Configure panel. Another module will cover this panel in more detail, so we'll just focus on the index aspects here. If the index file is not already in the build list, make sure to add it. Then, for each format you want to build, make sure the Generate Index button is checked. It should be turned on for all formats by default, but it's good to make sure. That's it for the initial setup. Now we can build our index. Go back to the dashboard. Under Build, select the formats you want to review. Let's do PDF for now. Then click Build. This will take a minute or two, depending on how long the book is. Let's check out the PDF. You can either download it or open it in your browser. Scroll to the end. You should see an index now. Ours is pretty sparse, since we only have a couple terms in there. When there is more content, it will look more like a real index. Here's an example. Going back to our sample, if you hover over each page number, you can see it's a hyperlink. If you click it, it'll jump right to the relevant section. Here's where you can see the ribbon icon is not actually rendered. 
This works similarly in EPUB and MOBI formats. If you want to check those, simply build them from the dashboard. Because Atlas uses dynamic indexing, if you move or delete tags, the page numbers and links will be automatically updated in your next build. Let's go back to Chapter 1 and check out the other fields we can add in the index dialog. Let's add a couple of terms. Sometimes in an index, you want to include a term that readers might look for while also indicating that the information is indexed under a related term. You can use a C cross-reference to do this. Sometimes you just want to mention a related term that might interest a reader. You can use a see also reference to do this. Let's check out the results. Make sure to save first. You can see that the terms with C entries don't have a page number because they are directing the reader to another entry that contains the information they are looking for. Terms with C also tags do get page numbers because they are simply indicating related content. Let's add a few more examples. Sometimes in an index you want a term to appear in a different section than the one it would normally fall into alphabetically. For example, the word pound includes starts with a pound sign. Let's add that term to our index and see how it renders. You can see it's in a symbol section at the beginning of the index but we really want to sort it under the letter I, where readers will be more likely to look for it. We can do that in Atlas using the sort as field. You can see the term has been sorted into the section we want. This works because the text in the sort as field gets alphabetized instead of the text in the primary field. Note there are three sort as fields. One for primary, one for secondary, and one for tertiary. These fields allow you to sort one or more specific terms. Another common indexing technique is the use of page ranges to reference content that spans a section or even a chapter. To do this in Atlas, you'll need to insert two tags. First, a starting tag with at least a primary term and an ID, and then an ending tag with a cross-reference that matches that ID. A page range will be automatically generated by Atlas when you build. Here's an example. Note that each ID you create must be unique across the book. The ID field is the only field where spaces are not allowed, so use hyphens or underscores to indicate multiple words. Also make sure to avoid using colons in IDs, and be careful not to start an ID with a number. Now we can go to the end of the content we want to include in the range and add an ending tag that matches the ID. Let's save and check out the results. There's our page range. You can see that both of the page numbers are hyperlinks. Be careful not to add an end of range tag without a beginning of range tag preceding it. Let's talk about some best practices and caveats. In general, it's safe to put index tags in most places in your files, except for code blocks or section or chapter titles, because tags in those elements can cause problems in the output. So for example, put your tag in a paragraph near a code block instead.
It's also best not to put an index tag at the very beginning of a paragraph, as Atlas sometimes misinterprets this as a new paragraph. If you need to insert a tag at the beginning of a paragraph, insert it after the first word. Also, make sure not to hit enter to create a new paragraph to add index markers. This will create a blank paragraph space in your builds, so don't do this. You don't want to see an index terms on a line by themselves like this. It's important to emphasize that when you work on an index, make sure not to make any changes to the actual text content. Just edit the markers. If you use IDs on any index terms, it's always a good idea to check the build log for any warning messages, even if the build succeeded. The log will warn you about any duplicate IDs if there are any. Here's an example from another project. You can see the warning is complaining about a duplicate ID with the value foo. And that's it. We hope this has been a helpful introduction to indexing in Atlas.